honey. So today we are going to be doing a quick weave and we're going to be doing it with a 613 but we're going to do the watercolor method and we're going to change it into a gray type silverish okay now I don't know what color it's going to come out to be but this is what I have. I got the Adore Platinum okay so that's what we're going to try to go for that is pretty great to me but you just really never know okay like I have a 613 closure that I bought this from my little hair store which it was um I think it was like $40 then I got the Tara hair which is 613 as well and we're going to be dipping all of that into the uh water hot water at that my honey's and we're going to go through all of that now here we are with this message I had just took those little braids out that I had but guess what we ain't gonna let that bother us because I am going to um, gel my hair up for this quick weave the old school way. So I'm not doing like the little pronto braid pattern and all that because it's going to be flat in the back. And I want it to be super flat and laid and slayed, okay? And I don't feel like braiding my hair anyway. So even though it takes longer to dry it versus just braiding it and doing it, I feel like I'm going to just go ahead because I still got to do the water method on the hair. And guess what? That hair has to dry too so they both can be drying. So we're not going to let that bother us. We're going to be using a new cap today. Okay. And all of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grease my hair with this goodness. I'm going to gel it back. Okay. I have this gel. I bought five the big one because I use it a lot. When people want waves and all of that, you just have gel on that, okay? So I'm a starless, so I have to have stuff in bulk anyway. So these used to be $7.99, they don't went up there $9.99. But anywho, I still needed it and it lasts you for so long and you don't have to worry about it. Now a lot of people that's natural are using um, clear gel and all of that, so they got clear ones too, that's as big as that. And you don't have to waste your time, keep buying those dollar ones, cause that's what I would do and all that extra stuff. So, I'm gonna just go through with my thing. This is a mixture, my honeys, of some of everything. I got black castor oil in here. I got coconut oil in here. I got um, this stuff in here, my do grow. You know how I feel about that. And I got, um, I got some other oils and stuff in here, but it's all oils and they're all in there. And I think I even mixed some of my aloe oil that I had made in the one video, remember that? I have mixed a little bit of that in here too. So this is a really good mixture. So giving me nothing but goodness. Anytime I do a quick weave, my honeys, I go in with this goodness. With all type of goodness, okay? I got some more goodness I'm gonna be putting in there too. Because the whole time that quick weave is sitting, my honeys, your hair is eating. And that's why I have always had long, beautiful hair. And then people worry about glue taking your hair out and this and that. My hair is in there strengthening up due to all the goodness that is sitting in there. So I'm not really worried about breakage and all of that. Now y'all know my hair fell out up here. So I'm really making sure to get all of this up here. I want that to eat, 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 okay? I don't even want to play with it. I got this Biotin Collagen Spray. Okay, it's a leave-in spray, and y'all know how I feel about that as well. I'm mainly putting this where I lost hair, so I'm going to hit that edge. Don't worry, I'll definitely do anything I do. I'm always going to hit that edge. This stuff helps to keep your hair strong and strengthened and all of that goodness, so you ain't really worried about... um. Your hair easily breaking off. The only way you're going to be breaking off some hair and edge is if you are yanking and pulling. You have done that, okay? The track didn't do it. You did it. So be careful when you take some tracks out. And I'm going to show you all another way of when I go to take my tracks out, molding my hair this way, I don't have those problems because I let the gel do the work. Y'all thought I was done? No, I'm not. Okay, so... <laughs> I got this uh, Do Grow Leave-In Conditioner as well, my honey. I put that in there. I also got, y'all know how I feel about this. This is Do Grow as well. This is my Mega Thick Lotion, hair lotion, okay? This is what I always have done for years to my hair before any quick weave, okay? This is before we even ever called it a pronto. This is how I did my hair. 
before a quick weave. And all I wore was quick weaves, my honey. You know I'm hitting that spot. All we wore was quick weaves back then. We didn't wear, uh, if we was wearing braids, my honey, it was micro braids. We didn't do, um, we used to do what they called the braids back then. We was doing, um, they was called Poetic Justice Braids. So from that movie with um, Janet Jackson in it, her braids, that's what we was doing. This is me massaging it through to hit every piece and part of my scalp. I got so many products in there right now. Oh Lord. And y'all said my little hair grew, didn't y'all, yeah? It did. It's been in the protective styles. I ain't been doing nothing with it because it fell out. So I said, you know what? I got to grow it back. I cannot. I cannot. I got this. It's a black castor oil, y'all. It's a hair lotion as well. Okay? So I just be going to get all this goodness behind it. I don't use it often now because I'm barely doing quick weaves. And I always have braids in my hair. The protective style one, like you know, these folks to the back, maybe six. <laughs> so it's not like I'm putting this stuff on top of them braids, but I grease my scalp with that little oil I showed y'all. I do that every day. If I ain't got the wig on for a few days. But yeah, I do. I got some shedage going on too. Cause I had them braids in. Now we're gonna bust it down into this gel. So from this section here on, oh my honeys, we are just really about to um, gel it up and I'm gonna do that without talking because you know how long these videos get. But this is what I did want to say before I forget. Once y'all see me put this gel in there and how I do it or whatever, right? It's a massive amount of the gel. So the gel is so, you know how gel is or whatever. By the time it dries, it's gonna be molded, okay, and then it'll dry. So when I go to take out this, we didn't use stocking caps. The only reason I'm using the stocking cap is because I'm using the front, so okay. We didn't use stocking caps. We just put that stuff right over our uh, molded, hard, crunchy hair, and then um, when we go, when I go to wash mine out, I have glue all over my hair, right? By the time I go, I take all the tracks out first. I don't do, I don't wet nothing, I don't do nothing. I take all them tracks out first. They come right off. If I'm around that edge, I'm gonna hold my, I'm gonna peel up a piece of that track and I'm gonna hold the edge and then I'm gonna pull the rest of the track off as I'm holding as I pull. So that way it's not really pulling edge. And then, once I get all them tracks off, okay, I go under the sink and I let the water run. I don't rinse out that gel. I let it get wet and cooky and ushy and it just be messy, okay? And it be gel everywhere. It be real thicky, this and that. And guess what? I take a comb, which is this. It's so sturdy and firm, it's not going anywhere. And then I start picking at my edge, like picking at my edge. Like you see how I had that little edge control in there? That softened up. That ain't making no noise right now. But look at this still like crunchy. Let's say if that was glue. That's weird glue stuck on there. You see what I'm saying? So, I would have just took my comb and picked at that. I'm going underneath them heads, just picking, scratching like I'm scratching out dandruff. Boop, and then I'm able to just comb that right out. Boop, you see that gel, that glue? That's what I would do with all the gooky gooky gel and this and that when I just had it flat out on my head. And then look, I got a whole head like this, full of gel balls. I mean, uh, full of glue balls, okay? But I was able to just comb right through that. And then at that point, then I add some shampoo to it and massage it through and then I go wet again, okay? I don't rinse, I just go wet again. Activate the shampoo and let it mix with that gel, okay? And then I go all through it like that or whatever. Now, even before I actually um, start picking at my glue, I wet that head and then I'll add that shampoo 
on there. And then I will mix the shampoo with the gel. It's cookie, it's cookie. Mm -hmm. That's exactly how I want it, okay? And then I go in with my comb and start picking at all the little glues that's hard and stubborn. And then it comes right out. So once I'm done and I have that glue all out like that, then I go under that water again. And then I just massage everything. Still cookie and cookie. I don't rinse it. And then boom, I make sure I comb it again. You do not want to rinse, completely rinse all the gel out and do all that until after you know you have picked every piece of glue that's on there out. You still gonna have the glue balls all in there, but when you wash it, wash it, all that's gonna come out. But, and before I rinse all that cookie out, nope, I am going to make sure I could comb straight back. And nothing get caught and all of that and it's cookies. Look, I'm telling my honey, it be dripping everywhere, be flying on walls. <laughs> it's, it's like that, but hey, it is what it is. You can clean that off, okay? And guess what? You can grow hair back, but why should you have to? So when I'm said and done, all I know is that I have full edge. I got everything I need going on and I'm not worried about that glue hat took my hair off. So I do like this way better, but I like prom toes too because it's barely getting on your hair with the stocking cap and then also the braids, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Anywho. like this and then let it dry it would be hard and crunchy it wouldn't be that cute so that's why they be trying to find good products to use you know to wear the natural curls like that I have not yet mastered that I don't, I don't know what to use <laughs> so um I don't know but they all come out looking all cute like this and natural curly and then when it dries either white or hard crunchy and don't nobody want that so but this is this is good healthy hair. I'm loving this. But we gotta cut, guys. We gotta do some major end clippage. I hate to keep talking, but did you know that this gel um is moisturization too to the hair? Like it has a stuff in it that grows your hair. It's giving you a hard hold, like hard head type of thing. Once this all dries, it will be hard as a rock. Okay, which means that your hair underneath it, which for me in my case, my hair underneath is not going to be um, soft. Because usually once you put it on, my honey, just on the outer coat of your hair, I'm a lightweight part of sections because I noticed over the years, this stuff was, this is what was growing my hair and keeping it good because it also has like certain type of conditions in it. So... That's what me and my daughter was just talking about. Like, when we used to use gel for real, our hair was good. We ain't worried about that. Not everybody using the got to be sprays and got to be and this and that. That stuff don't serve no type of benefit to your hair. So, this gel here, honey, yes, I, I remember. I, I messes with it, okay? I messes with it.
see that gel. Gel is black. That's the mixture with the grease. That's what I'm telling you is what we want. And then it's kind of like you used to think, oh my God, it's going to affect my, uh, the way I lay my tracks. My tracks are going to slip. Yep, sure would, but guess what? I put more gel on top. <laughs> it's a, it'd, be a, it'd be a whole demonstration when I put more gel on top. Then you got to spritz it down. Put just as much spritz as you would gel. But guess why I'm not worried? All that goodness mixed with that gel, I wouldn't care because my hair is still eating. It's not defeated by that. But you will comb all of this up. That's what I do for my quick wig. So I have to bust it down. I'm doing piece by piece. Because you want it to be flat, like a bald head. If I just slick all this up and don't actually bust it down, my honey, guess what? I have a helmet head. It won't be flat. It'll be lumpy. And then my hair will curl right on up. Look how it's ready to curl up now. More gel. It don't take this long, my honey. It really don't. It's just that I... Did not comb my hair out before I did this. This is still uh, 4C hair. You have to hurry this process up so it don't revert back. All the gel and all of that, it'll, it'll be boom. But by the time, you know, you look up, if you take it too long like I am, it'll just start curling back up. Now you just add more gel and whatever. So when you go to do this process, you just got to hurry up, get it done, and start the drying process as soon as possible. Now we used to just swoop this part around, <laughs> basically because everybody wasn't bald head, you know. And the back then they'd say, you gotta wear all that weave, they'd just call you bald head because you wear weave. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> My hair was longer than this back then. It was super long because all I wore was weed. Now, you see, I done pulled up my edge or whatever. That's fine because I need all this to be slick and, and wherever it needs to be. This is not a tutorial on how to mow hair. I be going too in depth, my honeys. I know I do. <laughs> I know I do. But some of my honeys don't know nothing about this process. Y'all used it in pronto. This is what we used to do. So yes, I'ma bust it down for my honeys. You had long hair, you start swooping that stuff around. It do not got to be perfect, but only thing you don't want to lose and miss sight on is this area, making it look like a helmet and fat. So you want it that flat as ever, but when it comes to all of this, we don't care about that. We about to slick that to the side. And whatever don't slick, oh well, we start dry. That's why my hair was growing like that, because it was protected. I had protective styles on the low. You know, I didn't do this process every day, but at least every two weeks, I sure did. But them wigs, you do that every day. You do that, um, them pronto's and stuff with all this stuff we using or whatever. If they don't last you two weeks, you're doing it every week. You're doing it every three days. Like you're doing this stuff too often. Give your hair a break. And that hair will grow. Like, I got this shortage up here. I ain't on that. I am about to get this hair to break. And that's gonna be it. But now that I'm a YouTuber, it's no such thing as giving break. So guess what I gotta do? I gotta give back. So that means the more I do to my hair and don't give it a break, I gotta make sure I give it goodness and feed it each and every trip. So therefore, it's making up and outweighing the bad, okay? So that's pretty much how you would handle that. But if you just going day to day using that got to be, that stuff is harsh for our hair, oh, you'll be a bald head chick. This is gonna assure that it stays in place too, right? See, look, if I touch on it, it's coming through. It's still wet. So I'm not gonna touch it where I want my lace to actually sit. But it is benefiting and helping for my uh, cap to stay on there when I touch on it. 
that gel ain't gonna do nothing but stop up in that cap and then when they all get hard it's all hard together the gel didn't just sit there and make my hair a helmet and the spritz didn't neither because of that goodness so I keep adding spritz, 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 and then every time that I let that spritz dry, then I turn around and fill on it, and everything seems dry up there or whatever. I just spray some more spritz because ultimately, when it's completely dry, I want it to be hard as a rock. And it ain't gotta be as a rock. I just wanna make sure that when I go like this, I don't have no greasies on my finger. Like, my fingers is greasy now, and that's just for me pushing in you know this on that cap so it's all a greasy mess a jelly mess and it's gonna be a spritzy mess but when everything comes together and it actually completely dry that grease will still be coming through my honey but at least the bonding glue will have something to kind of stick to versus just grease because it ain't gonna last <laughs> if you just got a greasy old thing it's never gonna last i will probably use the uh gots to be versus this but this is how we used to do it back in the day. Good old pump it up. Okay, so um, it's wetter and it, it takes longer to dry. But if you spray that gots to be on there, it's probably dry in seconds. I have never did this process with that because guess what? I don't have none to begin with. So <laughs> I need to go shopping, y'all. I told y'all I need to hit my stores and I haven't been anywhere. So it's slow for me right now. This is all I got to work with and we sure we is gonna work with it. So I want it in the middle, but I also want it to the side. So I'm probably gonna do like as far to the side as it will go, but still in the middle. You gotta take a sneak peek and you gotta see. It's stopping right here and right here. Okay, so I'll take my glue. It's stopping right here. And right here. got a big forehead so I like to keep my forehead big. I don't like to change it up, make it smaller. <laughs> She's a hater. First and foremost, we need to make sure that there's no lumps and bumps across your right there before it turns white. You want to smooth that out. That means you got too much glue piled up at that front and you that's exactly where you don't want that glue piled up at. You want that to be smooth and even. Cause that's your that's the beginning of your um place. That's the first thing they gonna see. Is that little area that's got so much glue bunched up there that is shiny as ever, ever, and look lumpy, and your lace is not seamlessly mixed with your forehead. And also, um, it just be looking gooky and packed on there, and you don't want that. Once it's dry, dry, it's not going to melt right. Then when you do put it on there, you're going to have to... Um, be gluing down the areas that's not right. That's not actually took the glue. It don't take no time for this stuff to dry, my honey, so it's like soon it's clear headed. I comb it back and mush it in there. Now, if you got white areas that was still in there, but the other areas has dried before those little white spots like this, you see that? That little spot wasn't dry. You wouldn't want to get the mushing on that, okay? You just would want to place this down like that. Because soon when you go in there mushing on it, it's going to come through like it just did. 
So what you would do instead, my honeys, is take that blow dryer and take the uh, teeth for the comb. This band will be helping it to just mesh with the skin and be flat as possible and there will be no lumps across the glue line. It'll just be nice as well. That's why they call this that milk belt. You see how them roots was brown, my honeys? I sprayed the even on there. My color is medium brown. It matches me to the T, as you can see. Sometimes it's not always to the T either, my honey. Like, okay, I got one of them skin tones that just works with everything almost. But sometimes, you know, you in between. It may not be working. But it's better to be a little lighter than yourself or even a little darker than yourself, okay? Today we are gluing and doing sewing. I mean, doing a quick weave, so. We're not gonna go in depth. I'm going in depth about this frontal though because I know this is a different type of quick weave on this channel. I'm gluing it down with glue. This is regular hair glue. And I'm just gonna go along that band there like that. I'm gonna try to hit it on the edge of that band. Uh-oh, look, I'm going over. Anywho, I'm gonna try to hit it right here on the edge because guess why when you lay it down it's gonna spread anyway you want to pull it from these hairs nice and tautly it ain't going nowhere from the front because it's glued down and you got that band but you want to make sure it ain't going to be no ripples and, and lumps within this part. So I'm pulling this back so therefore it'll be a nice flat lay. Then I'm going to move this to the side because you don't want to just push on top of that. And then it comes through the hair. So I'm just going to push it down along the top of the band. This is exactly how I would want my style to look like. It's coming like this. And I want it high like that. It's going to be short everywhere. And, you know, this side is going to come like that. But I want it to fall cute. Just like, you see how that look? Like a little wave almost. Like that. And then I want it to blend with everything else. But I really want this to stand up high. So that's what we're going to try to achieve today. So all I'm going to do, my honeys, and this will be off camera, okay, because we already pretty much know what's going on when it comes to laying them tracks, because we do what? We do not let them lay us. But I can show you the tracks real quick to show you how the color came out. This is the color. These are two different hair companies. So this is lighter than this. It is. You don't talk to me like that. Huh? You don't tell me. Tess. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So I'm gonna go ahead off camera and glue these in. And yes, I'm using black glue, but you can use white glue if you're scared and you're a beginner, you know, so you don't make a mess. But you see, I didn't make a mess. If you even look in there, that glue is nowhere but on the band where it's supposed to be. Anyhow, I'll see you guys in a hot second.
Thank you.